What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Factory Town. Now we are starting to make a bit of progress. We just got the cloth rail belt thingamabobbers. Yeah, the belts. And as you can see, they are significantly faster than the original uh, wooden ones. The whole process of this, remember, is to upgrade, use, upgrade, use, upgrade, use. Don't be afraid to rip things down and rebuild them. I think that's how you're supposed to play the game. It is certainly how I play the game. All we need to do now is make three more wooden belts, the originals. Top left-hand corner, you can see that. And we get to the tech level four. There we go. So we've now unlocked the met uh, metallurgy. I can't say it. Which is obviously metal working. Uh, and a few other things. But the metal working is going to be the most significant. Because that's what we need to get the next belts and wagons. In terms of buildings next. The tailor shop is a good option. We already have cloth. And we can turn the cloth into basic, simple clothes. That will give us quite a substantial jump on the the, the red coins. Because it's sold at the general store, I believe. It, at some point, you have to uh, sell the items at the tavern, which is the upgrade. Just flattening down the ground here to get this farm in. So this will be our third farm so far. This one I believe I did as cotton, so that we have a solid, strong supply of cotton and I don't have to keep getting my guys picking the bushes. As you can see, that one there on the right hand side, they're actually out of cotton and they're just stood there waiting. With this built, as soon as the cotton starts to come, it will then continue to come for a very long time. It will never end, as long as you keep it watered and fertilised, of course. So there's the cotton bushes done. We just need now to get two things. One is the water, of course. All plants need water. And the second is the fertilizer or manure from that belt that we've already got to sell. So all I need to do is extend that belt past here, past the grain farm, past the carrot farm, and of course into the cotton farm. Just upgrading all of the roads to be cobble because that again speeds up the people as you can see. They are jumping much faster. I'm not going to say they're walking much faster because I'll be honest, they don't walk, do they? They just jump. It's fine. I wonder if you can get a skin that turns them into kangaroos. That would be funny. Anyway, so we are putting this belt raised up over the fields uh, and that is going to feed in the fertilizer for the third farm. Plenty as you can see. The fact that all of the fields we've got so far for the grain and the carrots are done. The belt's not moving, which means we've, that's producing more than we actually need. So for now, what we'll do is we'll continue to expand the fields on the same pasture until the pasture says that it can't ha handle it. Then we will put another pasture in. With that done and upgrading the belts to the cloth belt so it's much quicker, you can see all of that fertilizer is going straight down to the cotton plantation. Now, yes, we need water, so we can do that. Plenty of wooden pipes already built, so not a problem there at all. You can't see it happening because without the farm tiles that are on the other two fields, you can't tell that it's doing it, but it is. It looks to me like the fact that the belt stopped means that the fertilizer is finished and everything has been fertilized. All you need to do now is uh, put the farm tiles down and we will see that. Now, to build them, we need the fertilizer in our storage. And I only currently have 17 looking at the uh, internal storage. Again, that's in the top left-hand corner. It's two per tile and there is, I don't know, two, four, six, eight, ten. There's probably about 100 tiles there. 80 to 100 tiles so we need 160 to 200 fertilizer in storage in order to build those farm tiles like the others definitely worth it though massive efficiency upgrade and production upgrade so yes do that definitely definitely do that while that belt is stagnant i.e the fertilizer is not being used because it's being used within the fields 
all of that should be going into your main storage so that you can use it for other things. You can see there them hearts mean that the crops are grown. And there you go. We have a lot now of cotton ready to be harvested. Nice simple belt coming out the side there. Again, cloth for speed and that goes into the workshop. The workshop then turns the cloth in to cloth, I said that wrong, <laughs> turns the cotton into cloth. The cloth then is being used of course to make more cloth belts and also now what we're going to do is use this population over here that is obviously picking cotton as well manually but clearly they're, uh, they have a much better supply because the belt is full and the bushes are still showing some quantity to pick so I'm going to chuck the tailor shop down near here now the tailor shop this isn't it that's the uh, the metallurgy for the for the iron ore um, but we will be doing that in a bit now you need to get the cotton into cloth first and then into the tailors to make the clothes but before we do that we're just gonna have a quick look at the iron plates and nails that are made here at the forge now this is iron ore you can see over here very similar to coal, though it's ever so slightly greyer as opposed to black. Behind it, I believe, is coal. So there's the difference you can see on the screen right now. It's very hard to tell. Click on it, though, it tells you it's not a problem. So all we need to do is get that, which does roll, luckily, um, down a chute, so it's nice and easy. Get that into the forge, and then it needs a form of heat. Now, you can use many things in the game. The most obvious and the easiest one is wood. Uh, that gives, I think, one or two heat per per, per log. Uh, but then, obviously, as soon as you get to coal, that's eight times better than using the, the wood. So what we're going to do is, actually, I think all of this is iron ore, because it does look the same colour to me. This is, yes, it is. It's all iron ore. So I'm going to get these, chuck in the iron ore onto the chute. So we'll have a nice supply of iron ore coming in. You can see nice, perfectly shaped balls of iron ore, as you do. Um, and all we need now is to do the same, but with a bit of wood. So I can do that here as well. Very basic to start with, until we get belts involved and miners. Proper mines, you can get mines and miners, so this will be much quicker moving forward. But for now, it's very manual. We'll then get the iron sheets, the iron nails, and that will allow us also to then make iron reinforced planks, which is the next step for the next buildings that we will be building. There we go. Now, at the minute it's not working. Don't worry about that. It's because it's raised up and I didn't realize because I didn't know the floor wasn't flat. So I'm not gonna waste your time with why it's not working. It, it is, that's how you do it. But you can see that the building's actually on a platform and I need to raise the resources up one to go into the building. At the minute, they're going under it. That's why you can't see them going in. And jump, jumping straight forward to that, as you can see, now it's on the same level. So when we go in here and we say, please make everything, there you go. Iron ore and fire going in immediately. And straight away, we are getting the product out as well. Of course, you need to move that because when the internal storage fills up of 10, it will stop working. So get something or someone or a belt to export the goods it's making. We now have 10 of the iron plates and 10 of the iron nails. The next stage, like every other resource, is to get the wood working better as well. Instead of them running around look, chasing all these forests, I'd rather have a infinite supply. And by infinite supply, you, mean a, you need a forester. A forester's job is simple. You plant the trees, he chops the trees, and then plants new trees. Now it's expensive because the trees are, I think they're 50 gold each, and you need to, we're about to see, right? We're plant tree, 50 gold each, yeah. And you need to plant about 100. So that's like 5,000 gold, and I only just had 5,000 gold. You can see my, just watch the gold at the minute, 3,200, as soon as I stop putting the trees down. Yeah, it, it, it goes fast. All of them people can be deleted. 
and all of those trees can be deleted. Now, at the time I was doing that, I didn't realize how expensive it was. I realize when I start putting them down again, because of course what I'm gonna do now is exactly the same thing again. I'm gonna put down the forester's hut, I'm gonna then surround it with trees. But it costs about 5,000 gold to plant all of the trees, and I don't have that. So yeah, I very quickly realized that I wasted some gold. Now you don't get, it, the game is really good at giving you resources back in most cases, but if you delete an actual resource, whether it be stone, iron, coal, trees, bushes, whatever, you will never get that back. So here we go, putting it down, but you can see my gold is rapidly declining, and there we are, down to 15. It's going up again because people are buying stuff, but that's all I can afford. So I am going to have to keep coming back to this over and over when I have enough. Of course, 50 gold per tree. Uh, there is also a boost you can put underneath it as well, very similar to the forest. No, why did I say forest? Very similar to the fields where we put the farm tiles down. For the trees, you have tree planters. So they're basically like you put in the trees in pots and you fertilize them. Uh, they are expensive. They require the red coins, I believe, and they are quite expensive. But again, definitely worth it for the efficiency. So always do that. You always want to use the farm tiles. You always want to use the tree planters. They are necessities. They increase efficiency massively. And it would be silly to build multiple farms without having first the efficiency boosts included. Once that is up and running though, that forestry will keep everything we have filled with wood easily by itself for a very, very long time. Efficiency wise, the, the, the actual farms are fantastic. Chucking in a kitchen now, a kitchen will allow us to make some fancier foods. We originally was using bread, no, we are using flour, but as you can see there, flour and fire makes bread. Don't, don't judge, don't argue, it's, it's how the game works. So of course we're going to do that now and I'm going to get all of my flour turned into bread and then sell the bread. It's all about efficiency gains of course selling selling two flour gets you four coins but if you turn two flour into one bread it sells for like 12 coins um, so it, it all adds up and it's all relevant. We've got plenty of cloth coming in plenty of um, cloth belts so I am going to upgrade this chain as well to make sure the flour from the field to food mill gets to this location quicker of course as you can see at the minute it's going directly into the market that now needs to go into the kitchen the kitchen will turn it into bread and the bread goes into the market and that is what I'm doing now nice and simple because it's one tile away you can put that in there and it will immediately just extract the bread and chuck it in now we do need fire you can't make bread without fire or heat I mean the icons a picture of a flame so you could say heat right uh, so we can just basically I'm gonna steal the wood from the one that I'm using for the fern arse, right yes so this wood here clearly we've got more wood than we need so I'm just gonna pull a shoot off here and throw that into the kitchen that will then immediately start putting out bread and to our very happy colonists. I don't know what other colonists, villagers, townies, whatever you want to call them. Tell me in the uh, in the comments what we would call them. And then for this, I'm just going to throw this over here and then use a belt to raise it up and over because, of course, you can't go up with a chute. Now you can see the goods are going in, the flour is being absorbed, and we are making bread. So GG, the first actual decent f meal that the, the, the colonists have had thus far. And just to show you, it's going over there and you can see the odd flicker of 12 gold coins now coming up above the houses, thanks to our bread. Massive improvement, of course, our gold is needed to buy the trees. 50 gold per tree and we're still only about halfway, so we need to do that too. Alright, maybe not halfway, maybe maybe almost halfway. Um, does the, the... No, it doesn't. It's not green, so it doesn't need water, but apparently I'm putting water into it anyway. Pretty sure it don't need water. It definitely doesn't need water. It says there. But I've done it, so it doesn't matter. Um, maybe they can use it to have a glass of water while they're, uh, while they're 
cut the trees down. Why not? So you just saw I tried to put a farm time. There it is, tree planter. So that's four fertilizer, 20 gold, and four wooden planks per tree. Remember, you've got to times that by like a hundred. So very expensive in terms of wood, fertilizer, and well, the gold's not bad, I suppose. Um, but it is worth it. So save up, do it. You won't regret it. Nice bird's eye view of everything kind of working. You can see the animal feed is going in, the fertilizer is coming out. The excess fertilizer is going straight around and into that barn. That barn is then having it transferred into storage so we can use it to do the fields and the tree planters. Cotton going into the general store. The flour going into the kitchen with heat to make the bread. This barn is full of fertilizer, right? So I'm going to get these guys to get that shifted over. I'm not sure if that is fertilizer. That looks like animal feed to me. But nevertheless, I'm going to move it over to the main storage, empty this barn out so that I can delete it without deleting all the resources because it will delete the resources if you delete the building. They can't get there because there's no road, so I'm going to chuck a road over these two belts. As soon as you put the road down, they should go, oh, that's how I get there. You know, our GPS activated, and off they go. Using the cobblestone as well, they are very, very fast. At least they roll, they're not kangaroos. Anyway, that will get that drained out pretty quick. We're not actually filling it anymore because um, the, the, the pasture is... is absorbing all of that animal feed and as soon as it gets full I'm just gonna build another pasture okay that's two-thirds of the way now right the trees are growing they take a while but again it's the same as all of the other crops as soon as they've grown they then stay fully grown and you get a constant supply I have cheesed it you can see here we are cheesing the free wood because it's taking far too long for the the, the trees to actually grow and be ready it is working now as you can see not full efficiency, but it's working enough, which means I can actually close down that other line. Uh, 10 people working in there, you can see it's at maximum capacity and there's really no need for that line at the back end there, but for now, it's not too bad. So looking through the kitchen and the recipes that exist, my aim here, aim here is to find out what can I actually do. I am growing carrots but as you saw there the meat stew it, all the vegetable stew you need a lot more than just carrots so what can I grow that is easily turned into something else berries berries grow on bushes so they are farming and that is easier than trees and cheaper so I think berries is an option and in fact what I'm gonna do is switch out the carrot field for a berry field the berries then go directly into the kitchen the kitchen then makes them into berry juice and that is a huge gain in in coins the carrots are giving me one per the berries give one per as well but you turn them into juice and then they give i think four or eight so massive gain and the fields already set up the tiles are already down and fertilized and watered all i need to do is rip up the carrots and buy the the, the, the berry seeds before I do any of that though the fact that we've got so much animal feed coming in I've built a second pasture now this pasture is not going to give just fertilizer I have asked it to do raw chicken so it's basically a chicken farm it does give manure or fertilizer as well but it gives raw chicken now the raw chicken can go straight into the kitchen and obviously with the heat cooked to cooked chicken so very simple processes that I'm using now the berry to the berry juice the chicken to the cooked chicken and the flour to the bread so what we're actually gonna have everybody gets a nice berry drink with a chicken sandwich unless you're a vegetarian who's not happy with that and if you are a vegetarian or a vegan we've got carrots still for now uh, until I get rid of them and then we've got berry juice well you could just eat the raw berries I don't know I will actually make the vegetarian stuff there is a veggie stew so we will get there but for now it's chicken sandwiches all round with a 
berry juice. You're welcome. And actually, before I move over to the berries, I'm actually going to move over here and bring all the kitchen and everything over to this side. We don't need it on the other side of there, as you've just seen, I've ripped it out. So I'm gonna move the kitchen and everything around the kitchen to the farms. So it'll come straight from the farms into the kitchen and then the cooked food will be transferred into the community. But we are at time for this episode. So to see that, please do subscribe for the next one. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.